Okay, so we are back, and I guess I want to keep doing like uh, basics of Creative Verse and doing tutorial format till we've covered the basics. So that's where we are right now. We last left off. Uh, I split up what was going to be part one into two parts, and we left off. Um, and I've done some stuff since then. Uh, but we didn't do the house yet, and we also have to work with pets. But I've got to go over some of this. So let's get into the world and show you guys what's going on. Okay, so a couple of changes here. First off, I noticed that the game seemed a little bit dark. So I have gone into my AMD settings and increased the brightness by 10. I hope it hasn't made the screen all orange and that's just sunset right now. So the game should be a little brighter and easier to see what's going on. Hopefully that has been settled. The next thing that I have done is I have actually gone through and I was told about something called Arc Vault. This is another new thing that they've added to the game and I wanted to unlock the ability to get that. So I've actually had to go through and to get the Arc Vault, I had to unlock an Obsidian Mining Cell. That's what these gloves are. They're Mining Cells, the official term. And I also had to unlock a Grand uh, Arc Chest, which meant that to do these things, Grand Arc Tech Chest, uh, now this gave me this. There's one other thing I had to do as well. I had to get... A uh, particular item. I can't remember what it was uh, right now off the top of my head. But all I had to do is look up arc or look up vault up here and then uncheck the uh, hide locked recipes. And then it gave me the procedure for being able to do the arc vault. And what the arc vault allows you to do is you can now transfer designs and things from one world to another. So they did add that feature in a way. Uh, through this which is really cool and I want to get this going I don't know if I need two one for the public and one for me I don't know yet uh, I had to kill a keeper I think it's the first time I've killed a keeper since I started playing probably I want to say I started playing 2016 or 2017 but it might have been earlier and it might have been a pinch later I don't think it was any later than 2018 I know I've been playing this game for at least two years probably three or four years more than likely that was to get me the arc stone that I needed for my first couple of items. Keep us provide arc stones. But after doing that, I decided I didn't want to kill any more keepers. I didn't really want to kill the first one. So I crafted myself a, a taming collar bell thing. And I'll show you that right here. It's called the taming collar. And I'm going to go through the process of taming a critter with you. And of course, if you're taming a critter, you're also going to need a stove because that means you've got to give them food so that you can get items out of them. Once you've fed the critter, uh, they're going to eventually want a bath, probably after they give you your first set of items, so you need to craft a washer. And with the stone mining cell that we've already crafted, and then later with the obsidian mining cell that you will craft, uh, you'll be able to suck up water, which will be very useful for creating soups and doing stuff with the stove, which will feed your critters. So now let's collect whatever our keepa here has for us. So it says right here, I'm ready to be uh, uh, harvested, I guess you could say. There was a little icon there that showed a glove. You can see it right there, a mining cell rather. So just press the suck button, which will be your left mouse button. And it won't hurt the critter. Don't use a weapon on it. Make sure you're just using your glove. And in doing that, you are now given a whole bunch of items. So you saw that big list pop up. If I press E, we can see some of what I got. I got a whole bunch of arc stone from them. And I got uh, all of this, some of the stuff down here, some wood, some dyes, probably some wax there. Uh, all kinds of things came from this keep. I really love keepers. I just can't get enough of them. And now the keep is telling me I'm ready for bath. So I have it assigned to my num keys to cycle. There's my weapon. There's my taming collar. And then if I go back, no, it's not there. Okay, I have to equip it. So pressing E, I can now go to where this is and I can put it on. And now it's in place. 
so I can press escape and there we go it's all equipped and ready to go it shows like this water bubble aim at the main body of the critter when you're both when you're taming and otherwise because as you see it moving around and if you try to aim anywhere else it sometimes doesn't latch and just spray them down that's just press and hold the uh, left mouse button and now we're all clean and it'll be ready for food and it'll go through a cycle like that over time it'll want food it'll want to then let you harvest whatever it has for you and then it will want to be washed and you can interact with the keeper by pressing F or whatever pet you have you can rotate by clicking on uh, with the mouse and rotating around you can select hats or scarves to give your critters I think you can name them up here, lock them or unlock them. You can tell them to stay, wander, or follow. Their default state will be to follow once they are, uh, once they're tamed. Uh, when you're taming a critter, I don't know if it'll be the same here on this world because the critters are non-violent. Uh, but on normal default settings, a critter will attack you, uh, you know, on normal settings if you're trying to tame it. So you got to be able to stand a few hits. And the more powerful the critter, the harder the hits are going to be. And those guys that are on the cliffs, the, the skeleton tornado guy things, I don't remember their exact name, they hit some of the hardest, and they could kill you pretty quick by throwing you in the air. So you got to be aware of that. you got to be ready with a lot of health potions and stuff for some of these critters in a world where the critters are going to fight back. I think this one, though, will be a little bit different. I don't use Wander too much because your critter might just disappear somewhere. Uh, so I just stay away from using Wander unless they fix that. Just keep them on stay. You can put them on follow and direct them into a pen or something you might build for them later. I'll probably just build a pen right here for them. Just a little fenced area and they don't even really need it just to kind of set them apart. He wants food again. He wants some soup. I have some food to give him. I'll go ahead and give him some food. So if I press E and uh, I go into my soup right here I can put it into the menu and I think I can just select it and it goes to him no I have to select him so press F make sure your soup is in your quick bar and then press whatever number and then press the same button you use for placement of blocks which for me is one of my side my first side button no excuse me is it not that yeah, it is that. So press it, and he gets his soup. He tells you if he uh, likes it or not. He says he's okay. His thumbs up, you know, he's real happy. And then uh, that's it. And then you just got to wait for him to process, and he'll have some more stuff for you to pick up. I've put the chest here and the stove here, and I've got a bunch of items already in my uh, chest. And I'm going to be trying to unlock all of this stuff for other players a little later uh, that might come by into the world and want to get things I want to have one public thing a at least if I can I've also found a few things I found a huge mineral spring uh, lake I've got the coordinates I took a picture of off the screen on my phone I don't know how to get to the coordinates yet so I gotta look up some commands and stuff it does look a lot brighter I'm, I'm liking that uh, and I'll be able to do that I change some settings in my graphics card so that it would be a smoother not so rough on the pop in so let me know what you think of the quality settings I'm still uh, I went down to 30 frames a second from 60 so let me know what you think of that um, I think that pop in stuff happens even if you're not recording so I'm not too worried about that oh yeah found the mineral spring lake mineral water lake which was very cool i want to make that a place that with a teleporter people can go to i found a tar pit a couple of caves that went down i found one of those uh worms that you saw from the first video fire worm or whatever they're called got one of those set aside let's go through the process of taming a critter but that's all i've done i haven't built anything yet i wanted one of those guys that have the flame tail so i'm going to go into my bell okay it's not there so I gotta go I think you have to swap between the water and the bell ah top of the screen scroll up scroll up boy I am tired 
Okay, so when I go after this guy, he's going to kick me pretty hard. Those guys I'm not going to try to tame. Although they do have tusks that you can use. Well, I'll do one of them if I can't find the flaming tail critter that I want. Now that little blip that showed up at the top of the screen, that's telling me that another Keepa has spawned. But the map has always, as long as I've been playing, been unreliable. Uh, it, that keeper could be anywhere in the world. You never know where it might be. Okay, here's our critter. So you go up to him and you press. Yeah, they're going to attack you even on this. you got to be able to take those hits. But now he is my tamed. So that's all you have to do. Hold the cursor or press and hold the uh, uh, left mouse button, whatever your default uh, sucking using processing blocks bucket button is. The, the same button that you pick up blocks with, use that. And that will allow you to pick up the critter. But be aware that the critter will attack you even on a peaceful world if you try to tame it. It doesn't like being tamed, I guess, or something. Now, that critter is in follow mode, so it should, theoretically, follow me up here. And I'll place him right next to the keeper. Should show right up, and it should be on the map, too. Sometimes they kind of jump like that. Now I'm going to press F because I don't want this guy to follow me around. He would like to have a horned melon. So that means we have to go over some farming later, which we're not going to do right now. And when we get him uh, fed and can process stuff from him, he will give us some things with that uh, tail is with explosives and stuff like that that you can use. So he's very useful to have. So we'll keep him right there. And he is now on stay. And we will come up here and we will begin the process of figuring out a little house that we're going to use. I'm going to suck up these torches. And I'm going to take another layer of stone. And I'm going to look into a stone block wall. I should have enough resources by now to do like a stone and timber kind of cabin. I don't want to make it too extensive and fancy. But I don't want to make it too plain either. I want to have a deck with a view. I will eventually have a mineral water healing pool. And we'll put a garden in. And any time that you want to come into this world, you can use my teleporter uh, location under the T menu, you can teleport to Dream Bliss and you can see this stuff that I've built. And if there's anything free I've put out for you, you can grab that. I've had two visitors to my world today while I was playing. I played for a good three hours and recorded with the new settings. And I think I'm pretty happy with the new settings, but this does look slightly orange. So I want to have to figure out why it's looking orange. We'll see how it comes out when we get done. Now that green bar you saw on the bell, there'll be one on here too and on your sword. That's your status of how much health that thing has before it has to be replaced. Now before we begin building, we'll go to Blue Hunter's area. Blue Hunter was kind enough to leave us a bunch of chests full of stuff. And I want to grab all of that now. We have a herd of lethal around here for whatever reason. That is very weird. Okay, now we're going to teleport back to my base. Okay, so let's get going on our build. Alrighty then, do I want to take off this one last layer of stone? Not really. Let's just work with it. We can dig down if we want to make a floor or whatever. I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to build in creative mode, so I'm going to press escape and I'm going to go to enable creator mode. And now I can uh, start flying around and I have access to all the blocks. Yeah, it does look orange. Let me know what you think if it's looking orange to you. I think I will start somewhere around here 
And I just want to frame out some kind of a structure that I want with some kind of a block that I might use or easily replace. One thing that's kind of lacking in this game is the ability to replace certain blocks. But with the creator mode, you have access to every block there is, so it makes it a little easier. But I still want to process if it lets me and build some of my own stuff. Now you can more easily sort this if you know what you want. If you click on one of these little things here, like if I go down here to stone, if they had stone, I could find stone. So let's see, that will be it. We need to do the 9x9 nine nine is the magic number that they use in Minecraft. You want an odd number if you want to make sure everything comes out right with a center. And I'm using creative mode because it's easier in the long run to get a house up. I don't see any point in having to struggle with the building process. Okay, there's going to be a deck coming out here. And I think I'll use these round pillars for part of this deck. I'd like to dig down and make a support or make a support column on the bottom. I'm not sure 100% how I want to do it yet. I'm going to go right here on the edge. Make sure that uh, you remember that it will save your rotation location as long as you don't place another block. If you lose it, try to remember the location you put it in because the textures will match based on where they're rotated.
When you're placing your blocks for your house, do not leave any spaces because if you do, your enemies can spawn inside of those spaces and drive you nuts even if they can't hurt you. So make sure you don't leave any spaces. And I like to make my structures look like they could really exist. I want them solid and built right into the land. Let's find some wood stairs. I want to show you guys a trick. I cannot take credit for this trick. This comes from a Minecrafter, and I don't know if it'll work even here. Um, and I can't remember his name right now, but he's a pretty famous Minecrafter doing Let's Plays. Uh, I'm thinking I might have a second area, second story somewhere along here. So let's take this stairwell and we'll place it here. And then because we have rotation tool, we will rotate it. And then we'll rotate it again. And then we'll rotate it this way. And now we will place the majority of the rest of my stairs, just like so. And then we have two options. We can have narrow beams by placing our next ones here. Or, uh, we can rotate this around. And now uh, we have a wide floor joist type beam going on in the house. Credit goes to the original YouTuber who came up with this. Um, and I can't remember his name, it starts with a B and my brain just won't let me recall right now.
Now, whenever you are facing a building, you do not wish to have uh, flat like this. You're going to need to add details, which we will add later as we proceed. And I think I'm even going to do something here. When they give you like mossy variants or variants that match to break it up a little, add those to add a little bit of a pattern or a little bit of a texture to it. For example, right down here, we've got a problem because this doesn't look very good. What do the backside of those look like? Check the back side and all the other different sides of your texture. See if uh, any of that will work for you and what you're trying to do.
Okay, so that concludes this video for now. I have some more work to do on this house, but you can see the general frame and idea I have here. You can also see the kind of roof line that I'm kind of thinking about going with. So you can see that as that would go back, we would have a very high steep roof going down to a lower roof. Now, I might change that profile if I don't like it. I'll just sketch it out with some beams and frame it in and see. I think I want to keep this kind of medieval style. The upper floor is higher or a little bit out more than the lower floor. And then I'll add some stairs or supports and stuff, and I'll show you how to do that a little later. I placed a Craigwood beam, as you saw, right in the middle here. So that adds like a little extra amount of depth and I will add stairs and stuff to go up to the second floor later and I will finish this deck. I do not like this super high pillar here, but this is the way it's going to be right now. I've got this excellent deck for a viewpoint and I'm going to exit out of creative mode and call it good for this night. Okay, well that concludes this episode. Be sure to leave a thumb up if you like the video. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this or any of my other videos. Um, be sure to hit that notification icon so that you can be notified when any new videos are released. And leave me some comments, feedback, suggestions so that I can improve and do even better for you guys. Also, please stop by my uh, Teespring store. I've got more designs coming over from Spreadshirt, but this is what I have here right now. I've got three cool designs. I've got this mask does not equal safe. It's kind of an attitude for everybody trying to make us wear masks right now. I've got this Zen saying and drawing that I did to reach your destination, embrace a journey. I think that's really cool. I've got a poem over here. Poem says, life doesn't have to be so hard. It has a flow. Sometimes you'll drift. Sometimes you'll row. But you get to choose a destination you'll go. I think that's really cool also. So uh, go ahead and grab some of this stuff, and that will support me and help me in my continuing work at YouTube. And I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching the video, and I will see you in the next one.